Good day and thank you for joining us. So if you can recall in our last lesson we looked at plotting exponential functions onto a Cartesian plane. So today what we'll look at is determining the equation of exponential functions. So we know that the standard formula for exponential functions is y is equal to a times b to the power of x plus q. But the problem we have with this formula is the fact that there are three unknowns and that is a B and Q and what you'll notice in when we are doing plotting that they will never when we are determining the equation they'll never really give us situations where we are dealing with three unknowns they'll always make it so that there are two unknowns so one of the ways they could do that is by maybe giving you one of these unknown variables so they could say y is equal to a times 2 to the power of x plus Q they could give you that equation and then they could give you the graph and then tell you to determine the equation from the graph. Cool, and in this case it's only two unknowns so that makes it a bit easier. Cool. Or what they could also do is say that the equation or the form of the equation that we're dealing with is y is equal to b to the power of x plus q. So in the scenario, what happened to A? A is just being held there by a placeholder of the value 1, which is completely allowed. But we don't have to include that, right? Because 1 isn't necessary to include in our equations. In these circumstances where there are being times with A, another variable. So how would it work when we are applying this equation over here to the graph here on the left-hand side? If they ask us to use this equation to determine the equation of this exponential function on the graph. So the first thing we can notice is that there isn't an asymptote given to us. Why is that? That is because the x-axis in this case is counting as our asymptote. And remember, your asymptote is represented by a value of y. And y is 0 on the x-axis. So therefore, we know that our asymptote is going to be equal to 0. So q is basically equal to 0, right? And so therefore we know that the equation already looks like something like this. y is equal to b to the power of x. Because now we don't have a q value. And so straight away what we have is an example where we only have one unknown. And all we need to do is substitute in an x and a y value from the graph. And in this case that would be 3 and 8. So let's go ahead and sub in that. So we're subbing in 3 and 8. Obviously, 8 in the position of y, and then 3 in the position of x. And so now all we need to do is solve for b, and that is going to be cube rooting, right? Because if anything's been cubed, if we want to get rid of the cube, we need to cube root. And so what we left over with, therefore, b is going to be equal to, oops, my bad, b is going to be equal to 2, which is the cube root of 8. And so, therefore, we get our final equation of y is equal to 2 to the power of x. So now let's move on to something a bit more different. So in this example we can see that we do have an asymptote but we are still going to be using that same formula. Okay, So they're still asking us to work out with y is equal to b to the power of x plus q. Cool, so we definitely have a value for q now and we know that is 2, right? Q is equal to 2. So therefore this equation looks like y is equal to b to the power of x plus 2. And once again our only unknown in this equation now is b. All we need to do is substitute in a value for x and y. So we will substitute in 2 and 18. Cool. So we'll substitute that in quickly. 18 is equal to b to the power of x. Sorry, we are substituting in the place of x2 plus 2. Cool, so what's going to happen, the 2 is going to go over, we're going to have 16 now on this side, and this is b squared, so to get b by itself, we need to square root. And so we did the one side, we did the other side, and therefore b is going to be equal to 4. And our final equation will look something like this. y is equal to 4 to the power of x plus now let's have a look at another example. In this example, once again, we do have an asymptote. For, so let's just start off by writing out the equation they want us to use. y is equal to b to the power of x plus q. 
And so now what we can do is incorporate that as and that given to us, right? Or in this case, remember they didn't put the number there, they just said y is equal to negative 3. So we know that y value is actually representing q, so that's q is equal to minus 3. So our new equation looks like y is equal to b to the power of x minus 3 this time. Cool, and the points that we will be subbing in is minus 3 and 5. Cool, and now the equation will look like 5 is equal to b to the power of minus 3, and that is minus by 3. So we'll take the minus 3 over, and what we end up getting is positive 8 on this side, and b to the power of minus 3 on this side. So, what we're going to want to do here is, because we can't have anything to the power of a negative, remember if anything's to the power of a negative, we can put it into a fraction. So what the fraction looks like is y. So this is 8 is equal to 1 over, so all we're doing is we're flipping it, so the b is going to the bottom, 1 is going to the top, so we have b to the power of, now it will be positive 3. And so from this point we can go two different routes, the route I'm going to take is by cube rooting immediately. So we're going to cube root this fraction, and we're going to cube root the other side as well obviously, and so on the left hand side we have a 2 left over, right, because that's the cube root of 8. And on this side, we have 1 over b. So now that's all left to do is to solve for b. So we'll times by b on this side. And what we do the one side, we do the other side. So that will basically cancel out that b. So we have 2b is equal to 1. To get b by itself, we have to divide by 2. And so what we are left over with is b is equal to a half. And so what our equation now is... Therefore, y is equal to a half to the power of x minus 3 as our final equation. Cool, so now that we've dealt with three of these type of examples, let's have a look at something a bit different. And for that, we'll be looking at an exam type question. So, this question says the graph of g of x is equal to a times 2 plus b. So, a times 2 the power of x plus b not drawn to scale passes through the points p is 2 and 1 and q on the y-axis as shown below okay so we have our q that's where the graph passes the y-axis and we have this point p over here which is 2 and 1 cool so we'll just say that's p and 2 and 1 and we can already see that we have an asymptote over here of 3 cool so let's look at the questions that are for us so the first one says calculate the value of a Okay, so remember now we're looking at the equation. So they use the other type here where they gave us the value of either A or B in this case. They gave us the value of B. They said it is 2. So this is the other type of example. Now we only have two unknowns, right? And obviously one of those are asymptotes, which we'll always be able to get from the graph that is made available to us. So now let's get started with the first question and calculate the value of A. Cool, so essentially what we will be doing is solving for the equation of this graph, right? So, let's go ahead and do that. Remember, we identified that we have an asymptote. So first, let's just write out this equation again. It is g of x is equal to a times 2 to the power of x plus b. Cool. Remember, we identified that the asymptote q is equal to 3, or in this case, they said that q is actually b. So we'll just write it as b is equal to 3. So then we can say, therefore, our equation now looks like, so I'm going to write g of x now as y, just so we don't get confused y is equal to a times 2 to the power of x plus 3. All this for us to do now is to substitute in a value for x and y because a will be our only unknown. So we'll substitute in p, which is the ordinance given there, and that's 2 and 1. So we're going to sub in 2 and 1. So it's going to look like 1 is equal to a times 2 to the power of 2 plus 3. So the 3 will go over, it become minus 3, so 1 minus 3 will give me minus 2, which is equal to a times 4. So now all this we have to do is to get a by itself, and to do that we have to get rid of that 4 that's attached to it, so we can just divide by 4 on both sides, and so therefore our a is going to be equal to negative a half, once we simplify that fraction on the left hand side. And so that will give us our final equation, which we can nicely write here at the top. 
um, which is g of x is equal to negative a half times 2 to the power of x plus 3. Now let's move on to our second question. So 7.2 asks us to calculate the value of the y coordinate of q. So we're just going to write here 7.2. So we're starting with that. So calculate the value of the y coordinate of q. What do we know about q? They told us that q, so this is the point that the graph passes through on the y-axis. So that is obviously going to be the y-intercept of this graph, right? So we're writing the, the equation that we found out. It's g of x equal to minus a half times 2 to the power of x plus 3. So what our job is, is to find out the y-intercept of this graph. And remember, if we're trying to find the y-intercept, then we need to make x equal 0 in this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So this I'm changing g of x to y again, remember. So y is equal to minus a half times 2 to the power of, because remember we're making x 0, plus 3. So anything to the power of 0 will give me 1. So what that's going to be is minus a half times 1, which gives me minus a half, that plus 3. So y is then going to be equal to 2 and a half, or 2.5. Either answer would be acceptable in this case. So they asked to find the y va value of the y coordinates of q. So we calculate the value of the y coordinate. That is 2 and a half. At that point, that is your final answer for this specific question. So now all for us to do now is to move on to that final question. Now we're looking at 7.3. So 7.3 asks us, if the graph of G is reflected through the y-axis, so the y-axis is our vertical line over here, right? And then translated three units upwards to produce the graph of H, write down the equation of the new graph in the form H of X. Cool, so we know we're going to have a new equation, which is h of x, and that's going to be equal to our new equation. Cool, so it says if the graph of g is reflected through the y-axis, so this is the vertical axis, so it's going to be reflected, so it's going to look something like this. I'm going to do it as accurate as I can. So, that's what the graph will end up looking like if it's reflected through the y-axis, but they say also it's translated three units upwards, so this is going to move three units upwards okay so we're adding three units up cool so all the important things we need to note about this and how it will change our equation is as follows so negative half will stay the same and the reason for that is that only two things are changing in this example and I'll explain that to you so x will change because remember now if we are changing where all the x values lie so in this case we're reflecting about the y-axis all the x values will change so a way that i like to look at this is that in this specific example where most of the x values displayed to us is on the positive side of the x-axis right this is the positive side then we add that positive x over there but now most of our values are on the negative side of the x-axis so in this case x will now become negative so this is negative x. So it's 2 to the power of negative x now. The other thing that is changing is our q value. Cool. Or in this case, in this question, they call it b. So our b value, which is our asymptote. Because remember, they're saying here that we are translated three units upwards. So in this case, it's moved three units upwards. And remember, a, a exponential function cannot go past the asymptote. So obviously, if the graph is moving three units upwards, that means the asymptote is as well moving three units upwards. So that means that onto this three over here, we will add a, another three. And that will give us a positive six. Of course, though, there is another way of writing this because we know that anything to the power of a negative can be changed to a fraction to make x positive, right? In this case, though, you will get the mark for either one of these answers so it will be h of x remember negative half stays the same and our x became negative because now the way i see it we are on the negative side of the x-axis most of our values cool so this is going to be 1 over 2 to the power of x plus 
six. So that's the only thing that changes between the two. And that is the end of this exam type question. So I hope that this lesson has been informative, that you are, that you are now able to understand how to determine the equation of an exponential function from the graphs given to us and especially that it helped you understand how to answer some exam type questions as well that you could come across in your actual tests. So thank you for joining me. I hope this has been helpful and have a good one.